evening and welcome to Causes of Crime with Ash and Nunn, coming to you live at 10.05 p.m. from the Sociology Building here at Hamill Headquarters. As our loyal viewers know, each week we ask viewers to send in an interesting, newsworthy video and then we pick one to analyze. So this week our story is about the Weaver family sent in by Vincent Price. Here's a quick recap. In 1984, Ward F. Weaver Jr. was found guilty of the 1981 murder of an Army recruit and the recruit's girlfriend. In 2004, Weaver Jr.'s son, Ward Weaver III, pled guilty to aggravated murder for the 2002 killings of two 12-year-old girls to the rape of his son's 19-year-old girlfriend and another 15-year-old girl. In 2014, Francis Weaver, Weaver the third son, was arrested for the murder of a man in a drug deal gone wrong. This family has a long and prominent history of violence and criminality, but why? So now that you're all caught up to speed, let's get to analyzing. The burning question is, what is it that makes this family so prone to killing and violence? So after analyzing the case, Nunes and I have come up with a few theories to help explain this Weaver family. From our first look at the case, I immediately thought criminal heredity. It makes sense. I mean, all of them are related and they're all criminals, so it must run in their blood. The theory links genetic traits to criminal behavior. And being that we are discussing three generations of men, they have to have similar genetic traits. The science of eugenics studies families throughout generations with the purpose of identifying criminal predisposition. When nature and nurture are compared, nature always wins. Take the case from last week where we analyzed the twins who were separated at birth. They were raised in very, very different circumstances, but in the end, they both still exhibited extremely criminal tendencies. Nature wins, and with the case of the Weaver family, nature definitely won. Well, my first thought when watching the case was it is biological, but more specifically, biological determinism. See, this is a theory from the early positivist school in the 19th century, originally thought up by Cesar Lombroso. The theory rests on the basis that biology affects behavior. He believed that criminals are born rather than shaped and made throughout their interactions in life. So basically, criminals are born with an innate impulse to commit crimes. So according to this theory, Weaver Jr., Weaver III, Francis Weaver, and even Alex were all just born this way. These crimes and their criminal activity are just a manifestation of their innate tendencies. But you know, Ash, now that I think about it, there's another way we could explain this. From looking at all the different clips and news stories, it's evident that all of the Weavers grew up in really hostile environments, witnessing abuse from their parental figures. The sequential biosocial model states that the environment a person is in can really affect their behavior. So surely, it can be thought that being raised in these types of violent environments can lead to violent criminal behavior. So this theory has to play some sort of role. Great point. I, I get what you're saying. I see how that could play into the case. But also another big theory that came to mind was that came to mind for me was the lifestyle theory. And so with this theory, it involves different personality traits such as impulsiveness and irresponsibility, as well as the effects of negative interpersonal relationships and past experiences. So looking at the three generations involved in this case, we see that each man seems to have a tendency toward violence and a very impulsive nature. For example, in 1986, Weaver III attacked his friend's daughter seemingly on a whim. And then in 1999, Francis Weaver just shot a gun into a truck full of teenagers. That screams violence and impulse. And then diving even more deeply into the lifestyle theory, we look into the effects of negative relationships and how past experiences have played a role. So like you said, all the men have suffered some sort of abuse or hardship. And so these detrimental relationships with their fathers or with their parental figures, they had to have contributed in some way to these future violent actions that we see in the case. That makes a lot of sense, Ash, but how about we look at some deterrence theories? These are founded in behavioral psychology, and the first, and what I think is the most related of these, is routine activities theory. That states that for crime to occur, there has to be three factors present. The first, there has to be a motivated offender. Second, there has to be the lack of a capable guardian. Three, there has to be a suitable target. So let's look at the, let's look at the case of the uh, Ward Weaver III. He's definitely a motivated offender, right? Because he's clearly intrigued by young girls and he has a tendency towards violent actions. Two, there are clearly suitable targets here because Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis are two young girls walking to the bus stop every day without their guardians. So there's a lack of a capable guardian to stop the crime from happening. So I think the Weaver the Third's case is probably the clearest example of the routine activities theory, but we see this in the two other cases as well. Well, you know what, Nuns? Let's see what our viewers at home think. Great idea. 
Caller number one, what you got? Hey, Ashenon, I watch your show every Wednesday and Friday. I love your show, and you two are so insightful on causes of crime and different theories that attempt to explain crime and criminality. You two must have had a wonderful teacher. Anyways, I'm Richard Broadhead, and one theory I think could be applied to this case is the arousal theory. Clearly, killing and or raping individuals gives these men a drive, a thrill, a rush. If not, they wouldn't continue to do it, you know? That's a great point, Richard. Thanks so much for your compliments and especially your thoughtful insight. This has been a very interesting show today, but unfortunately, we are just out of time. But I think we were able to cover quite a bit and hopefully to shed some light on this complex family of killers. Well, viewers, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Causes of Crime with Ash and Nuns. Adios.